Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be discussing the supply and profit and loss. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. So the supply and profit and loss is a really interesting chart uh, because it shows you just the percentage of the Bitcoin supply that it is sitting either in a profit or it helps you identify those, the percentage of, of holders that are actually underwater. And the great thing about Bitcoin, at least historically, is that, you know, given enough time, it eventually goes to an all time high. So eventually you reach periods where the supply and profit is at 100 percent, right? Because everyone who bought Bitcoin, um, so we're not talking about like leverage or anything like that, right? And where if you get liquidated, but anyone who just bought spot Bitcoin and held it, eventually they reach, you know, 100 percent of those people are in profit. Uh, and then sometimes, of course, you you'll see you'll see holders go into significant losses. What's really interesting is that market cycle bottoms tend to occur whenever these two metrics cross, right? So you can see they crossed over here in 2011. That marked a major cycle low. Crossed in 2014, marked a low. Crossed in 2018, marked a low. Also, they also crossed here in March 2020, which marked a low. And then also, of course, at the end of 2022. So. This has been a pretty reliable metric for identifying major market cycle bottoms. And I think that's the primary use case for it. Market cycle tops are not as obvious. I mean, it looks just like any other top when you're just looking at this chart until it's only going down. But what's really interesting, if you apply a 30 day moving average, what you'll notice is that anytime this metric, you know, gets up to these levels up here, right, when it's like really well above 90%, that's when you at least need to be on the lookout, right? It doesn't mean that it can't immediately, it doesn't mean that it can't go higher in the short term, but it's usually from those levels that you will in fact start to see larger pullbacks. If you look at the one in 2013, you can see we had a pretty big rally up here and then it came back down and then another rally back up and then it came back down, right? And when it hit, you know, these levels up here, 99%, 100 or near 100% the 30 day SMA, that generally marked sort of a high. Um, in the last cycle, you can see that around these levels, that's where those highs occurred before pullbacks, and then it came back up sort of later on in 2021, and that's where it marked another high. And then if you look right here, you can see that in March 2024, it sort of rounded out at around 97% or so. And then in December 2024, it rounded out about 98% or so. And the reason I bring it up is because right now, it's at around 96.71. So it's kind. this is kind of in line with what we've talked about uh that the strength uh you know we've talked about this a lot this year we said weakness for bitcoin between february opex and early to mid april that played out great and then we said to expect a rally in q2 and here we are and my general assessment right now on the market is that the strength could continue uh for a little bit longer uh hopefully it puts a new all-time highs but there's no guarantees but I think as you get out, you know, closer to Q3, you're likely going to see this come back down, right? Kind of like what we saw the last couple of years, right? Up, right here, right? And then you sort of get, you know, you get a pullback. Now, two years ago, in May of 2023, there was a pullback, but supply and profit and loss was actually a lot lower. But this is a metric that, you know, if you zoom in, you can see that as it comes up into this range, that's where Bitcoin... It doesn't mean it can't go higher. It just means the momentum isn't as strong, right? It's not quite as strong. Um, unless, of course, you go into the parabolic mania phase, right? Which, I mean, that always could theoretically happen. But as long as the status quo remains unchanged, um, then, you know, you just play what you get. <laughs> play the odds, um, you know, play the game until the game changes, right? Is, is kind of what I've, what I've learned through the years. Uh, but one of the things to think about with this is that as it comes into these range, right, as the 30-day SMA gets up into this range, that's usually where Bitcoin's momentum will struggle uh, in the short term. It doesn't mean that you can't continue to go higher. It just means that you might start to see pullbacks from those levels. Even in 2017, you know, on these highs, you would still see pullbacks as that 30-day SMA got up, you know, near 97, 98, 99%. Again, I'm just bringing it up now because we're getting close. We're not quite there yet, right? It's at 96.71 back in December, this thing, the 30 day SMA went all the way up to over 98, right, which would, you know, still be a little bit of time away. So it's still in the general agreement of, you know, sort of the the rally from 
early to mid April that would likely extend to May to, to, to late May to early to mid June. Okay, and I, I'm still kind of sticking with that time frame. I think there'll be a pullback at some point in the third quarter, maybe around August, September. Um, and that would just kind of be in line with what we've seen uh, this cycle, you know, sort of those pullbacks after you get these big surges that last for a couple of months, then you get a pullback. And that would seem like a good time to see one. And then maybe it just puts in another low, at which point it builds off of it and goes higher in Q4. This is what you might want to watch, right? When the supply on profit and loss, 30 day SMA gets back down to about 77 or so, that's at least marked the last couple of lows before then the next surges uh, to the upside. But anyways, we're going to keep it short. We're not going to go on too long in this video. That is the Bitcoin percentage of supply in profit and loss. Hopefully you guys find uh, a use case out of it. I think it's really aesthetically pleasing to look at, just sort of the, the ebb and flow of the cycles, the fear when about half the people are sitting in losses, and then the greed when everyone's sitting in profit. And the cycle goes on, and the cycle goes on, and the cycle goes on. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.